Hello everyone, this is Cynthia once again on Embracing His Word. Well, this is video number three. And in this particular message, I will be talking about how to break a soul tie. My foundation scripture is found in Psalms 124, 7. It says, our soul has escaped as a bird out of the snare of the trapper. The snare is broken and we have escaped. So in this particular scripture, it uses um, our soul uh, as a simile compared to a bird and a trapper. And so uh, a trapper or a fowler is a what you will call a hunter. And it hunts for birds. To, to ensnare them, to trap them. And so when you think of the scripture comparing our soul to a uh, trapper or a fowler, the enemy, Satan, he's always looking how he can trap God's people, how he can snare them into all kinds of bondage, sin, and iniquity. So we have to be aware that we must always put on the full armor of God so that we can escape the snares of the enemy. And you know, the scripture says the snare is broken and we have escaped. See, God has already provided provision for us to escape the snares, the traps of the evil one. Psalms 91, uh, 3 says, So Psalms 91, uh, chapter 91, verse, on it, verse 1, it says, When you sit enthroned under the shadow of Sh Shaddai, you are hidden in the strength of God most high. He's the hope that holds me and the stronghold to shelter me. The only God for me and my great confidence. He will rescue you from every hidden trap of the enemy, and he will protect you from false accusation and any deadly curse. So here is the promise of God for his people, and we need to grab hold of the word of God and the promises of God and live in alignment so that we can claim these promises for our lives. And you know, um, so have you uh, ever had a relationship with someone um, that in the beginning, uh, you thought that was the right person for you, that person would be your soulmate, but instead that person turned out to be very toxic for you. So today we will be discussing how to break free from those relationships that you do not need to be in, those toxic relationships, breaking free from the ungodly soul tie. So my first point, so I'm talking about at least about three or four points today, how to break free from ungodly soul ties. My very first point is um, uh, acknowledging your sin and going to God in repentance, acknowledging your sin and going before God in repentance. What we want to start out, um, the reason why I say that we should start out in repentance is because we want to demonstrate to God that we're truly humbling ourselves under his mighty hand. We're truly sorry and broken and contrite for our sins. You know, oftentimes, well, when we are committing sins or or we're into some type of descent, we do we just can't go before God like just going through the motions. But God is expecting us to truly be broken and contrite uh, before him. And Joel chapter 2, verses 12 to 13 it says, The Lord calls to Israel, Return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning, and rend your hearts and not your garments. So people in the Old Testament, they commonly uh, express great grief and anguish by tearing their clothes or their, their garments that they have on. But more than caring for the proper signs of being upset about their sin, God cared that they actually grieved over them in their hearts and grieved to the point of weeping and mourning. And you know, when, when people are truly broken, you will see that they're truly broken concerning their sins and their transgressions. And I uh, I wanna share this because this particular testimony because um, I was ministering to 
a young lady and she was explaining to me that uh she's she always have difficulties in her relationships family relationships outside relationships so she was having experienced a lot of difficulties in relationship and the lord began you know it all begins with a repentant heart it's you know if the lord shows me that the person is truly repentant they're truly broken they're truly contrite then he can really move and and in power and demonstration, releasing healing, releasing deliverance. And so I began to uh, ask her, because a lot of times people will tell you some of the, the things that's going on with their lives. Uh, and oftentimes those are just symptoms, leaves on the tree. But when we get to the root issue, the root problem, why they're really experiencing what they're going through, then, then that's when they can really gain their breakthrough. And there must be repentance, there must be brokenness, there must be contriteness before God in order to really experience your healing and deliverance. And so I began to, the Lord began to show me that there was a, a spirit of rejection that was operating in her life. And not only was, was there a spirit of rejection, God began to, as I began to question her about some of the things going on in her life, God began to show me. She began to open up and shared with me that she was abandoned by her mother. And so, and I explained to her, I said, now that is the root problem that you are experiencing in your life. I said, you can either get rid of this spirit today or you can go back home like you came. And so she settled it in her heart and I and she was willing to go through a prayer of repentance. She was willing to renounce the spirit of rejection, willing to renounce the spirit that was behind her abandonment. And God began to manifest powerfully in her life she she began to shed tears she, she began to be broken about you know holding those things in her heart against her her mother even though she was abandoned by her mother she began to demonstrate true repentance and brokenness and do you know what god did for her god began to release healing he began to release total deliverance in that young lady's life so i want you to see we just cannot stuff our emotions down and expect to receive healing and deliverance we cannot cover up our sin and our iniquity and expect god to release healing and deliverance but we bring it out to the open those things that the enemy want us to hide want us to uh, cover up because the more we try to cover those things up the more we continue to walk in that bondage but when we begin to expose those things what the enemy is doing in the dark bring it to the light so that god can release his total healing and total deliverance so the very first point is to acknowledge your sin and to go before god and true repentance you know in uh psalms 51 says um I love this particular song because this is David going before God and his brokenness. After he had committed murder, after he had took someone's wife, David goes before God in repentance. And he says, for I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. For example, if you have been in a relationship, that relationship has been toxic, you've been committing fornication, you've been walking in unforgiveness, bitterness, the works of the enemy have been at work in your life. This is the day, this is the time that you really need to go before God in repentance and brokenness and contriteness. You need to be crushed about the sin and iniquity that you have allowed the enemy to operate in your life this is the day this is the moment this is the time and and another good thing uh if you've been in deep sin deep iniquity uh there's been generational uh curses operating in your life you really need to get with someone another strong believer that you can confide and really trust someone that's not going to spread uh the things that that you've been going through you really need to contact con connect with someone that you can confess your faults to because the scripture says confess your faults to one another so that you may be healed so a lot of times we don't want to confess because we don't want anyone else to know about what we've been doing but this is how, this is scripturally how oftentimes we can receive our healing and in our deliverance. 
So when someone comes to me and they, they want prayer for healing or deliverance for something, and they're not ready to truly be broken and contrite, they don't receive anything. They may, you know, God, I say a prayer for them, but most times they don't really receive what they really need. So the important key, very important key, is acknowledging your sin and going before God in repentance. And I want to add on to that. Oftentimes, um, uh, people experience um, traumatic uh, things in their lives, for example, being abandoned. No, so that was not her fault. But how did she respond? How did that, how do you respond to abandonment? How do you respond to rejection? How do you respond to being abused sexually or verbally or physically? We must release all these things to God. I'm not saying to just brush it out, but we, we release all these things to God and I allow the Lord to heal our heart, our wound, and not allow the enemy to snare or trap us into bitterness and unforgiveness. That's how we go before God when we experience these things. So when we allow our flesh to feed the demonic soul tie by continually taking part in sinful behavior, um, this is a time you need to acknowledge I, I've been walking in sin and, and I need to go before God in true repentance. And so as I've been talking about going before God in true repentance, once you repent, don't allow the enemy to continue to replay those things that you were caught up in and sin and iniquity. So when the enemy brings those things, because oftentimes when people receive deliverance, the enemy is going to try to come back to, oh, you're not delivered. Oh, you're not healed. You're not set free. And so don't buy into that snare. Don't, don't go uh, and allow the enemy to trap you with that bait. But you you verbally uh, declare and announce to the enemy, I am healed, I am delivered, I will walk in the love of God, I belong to the Lord Jesus Christ. That's how we set the devil straight with, with, uh, with our words that we proclaim that we belong to the Lord Jesus Christ. Satan, you have no place in my heart. You have no place in my mind. I rebuke you. I bind your works. I cast you off from my life in the powerful name of Jesus. So that's how we take care of the enemy. And David says, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. So we don't want to just ask God for forgiveness, but we want to take it a step further. Say, Lord, create in me a clean heart. David is asking for a transformed heart. He wants his heart to be right before the Lord. He says, create in me a right spirit. You know, we can have a wrong spirit because we'll open the door to the enemy. So we ask Ask God, create in us a clean heart, a transformed heart, a new heart, and a right spirit. We want to walk with a right spirit, a spirit of excellence, a spirit of integrity, a spirit of honor, so that we can truly honor the Lord. So this um, particular video um, is video number three, and I am talking about uh, points for breaking free from ungodly soul ties. I will continue to do um, the next video because I want to go into depth. Some of the point, these points that you really need to put into practice in your life. So my next video, I will be talking about renunciation and some other things. So be, make, make sure that you share this video. Uh, I need you to make comments and be blessed and have a wonderful day.